Getting shadows. And I'm not going too strong, just a little bit. I'm going to do some more shading. And now I'm going to put a really soft little highlight on the nose. Do it all in the direction of the fur growth. I need a bit more highlights on the nose as well to define it a bit more. Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome back to my channel. The reason why I'm wearing this hoodie today is because we are going to draw a cat. We are going to use soft pastel pencils on brown paper. You can always swap these materials around if you don't have soft pastel pencils and just use pastel or perhaps colored pencils. You would have to adjust your technique a little bit though. I also would like to say thank you so much guys. This has turned into such a cool little community. I really didn't expect that when I started the YouTube channel. Um, so to say thank you, I've got a little gift for you. I really hope you like it. So please watch till the end to see what it is. And for now, just enjoy and relax. If you are planning to follow along as well, you can use something like this, or you can um, just use white paper, which you know would work the same, but um, you would have to change the technique a little bit because today I will be using lighter colors as well as darker to create this drawing. So if you are using white paper, then your technique will be a little bit different. Um, not too different, but you would have to adjust some things. So here are my um, pastel pencils. So it's like a soft pastel in the shape of a pencil, different brands in there you can see. So I'm not going to suggest anything specific. Anything you have would probably work. You can maybe even use your regular color pencils, but um, you're just going to have to um, adjust your technique a little bit. So I'm going to start with um, the simple sketching, you know, getting the shape and size. All right, so about there. I'm not explaining how to structure the animals in this video. If you would like to know how to um, structure any animal or any shape and size in, you know, the living creatures, um, you can always go to my Patreon and watch a video there. I've made a video on, you know, the basic um, sketching and structuring of um, different animals. Another paw and that's the hind leg there. So here I'm only sketching this animal according to the picture that I am uh, looking at. And this is this thing that the cat is sitting on. Now I'm moving on to more detailed um, structures. It's a very cute cat, this one. And now I'm going to structure the face a bit more. Marking where the eyes are going to go. Now make them a little bit bigger. Now 
and now I'm starting to define different forms and, and shapes and I'm also going to um, erase the lines that I don't need anymore and not going to use anymore the fur folds and see now I'm defining the shape and as the drawing progresses I can get more and more into the detail one of the very common mistakes that students start to make when they just start to draw is to get into the detail straight away you will spend much more time that way correcting your mistakes and spending too much time so the distance between the eyes is a bit wider than the nose okay I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the lines that I don't need so these are the lines that I'm completely erasing and then I'm going to lighten up some of the um, areas that are quite dark because I don't necessarily want these lines showing through in the finished work So what that does, you don't have to do it, but what that does is it helps you um, to get rid of, of the really pronounced lines because you might not want these things to be coming through in your drawing and depending on what you will be using afterwards, you might not want to use um, pastel pencils, you might like to use something else and then some materials like sometimes ink pens some type of ink pens not all do not apply well onto the onto the graphite pencil so then you definitely need to do this so that you don't have a really thick layer of it there you know so you can kind of see it a little bit but not too much if you would like to know more about these kind of um, materials please watch uh, my video where I talk about erasers and things like that you know graphite materials okay so I think that's enough now I'm going to start with the brownie reddish spots and I'm going to start and work all over I'm just marking some of the darker patterns on the cat's fur if um, you are very particular say for example you are working on animal portrait so someone's expecting that animal to look like that animal then you would probably need to sketch through the patterns of the fur before you start going in with color just to make sure that you work that through really well now in my case I'm just using the photograph for inspiration so um, it's just a just a random cute cat <laughs> So at the moment I'm going through um, darker areas so I'll just go over it again darker areas are areas on the pattern of the fur and also natural shadows as well so I'm sort of just mapping those things out I'm not exactly working through everything but um, yeah, just mapping them out
not getting into any details or anywhere close to the details Again, just marking it through, I'm not I'm not forcing it too, too much at this stage It's just the beginning You see, even in this instance where there is thicker graphite um, Pastel doesn't want to go on as smoothly. So I have to kind of force it. That's why it's, it's really good to, you know, just soften things before you get into your uh, full, full blown color. <laughs> okay, so just defining things a little bit. Now I'm going to move on to another color. That's more of an ochre sort of shade. And that's going to allow me to bring in a little bit of that yellowy shade. color onto the fur um, think not just about the color but also think of the texture and it'll help you a lot and it'll save you a lot of time because if you are putting your pencil strokes in the direction of the fur growth you're getting two things done at the same time number one you are creating um, your color and number two um, you are also creating your texture at the same time. In the areas where I want to deposit a lot of pastel, I'm sort of going in certain motions like that. Now you see on this paw here, there's a little bit of sort of a, a yellowy tint in the fur. Now. To create that color, what we need to do is we need to apply a little bit of this color. But because in my case I'm working on this colored paper, which is very close to the shade, I'm not going to put too much of the color. But if you are working, for example, on the white um, paper, then you would need to apply more of the specific color. But say you would have to apply less of white on the pores. Next, I'm going to go through with some deep red. Now, there are no names on these um, pencils for their colors, and I've got some few new ones because I've, I've lost half of mine, um, the ones I had, but um, it's like a dark, deep sort of a red. You know, I've done lots of different um, portraits of animals as commissions. I've done lots of paintings, you know, like my sort of a pop surrealistic um, art 
you know, my own personal works that I do. Um, and every time that I would work on a cat, I would always be surprised just how much pink there is in the cats. It's very strange, even if the cat looks yellow, you can't get the right color until you put pinks or reds into them. It's very strange. It's sort of like... And it doesn't matter, even with gray cats, still, there's just so much pink in there. Um, it's very surprising. If you have a cat, go fetch it and have a look and see where it's got pink. I know pink. I don't have um, any pets at the moment. I uh, did have a cat, but um, sadly he passed away uh, about a year ago. And we haven't had any pets since. So let me know in the comments. Do you have a pet? A cat? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Some people absolutely hate cats. But I think more people love them than hate them. Next I'm going to go with the orange. And I know there isn't much orange on the cat, but I'm just going to go over to warm up the color. You see how with each layer of um, different colors the, the picture sort of changes a bit. I'm going to smudge some of the areas. Again, this is not a must. You don't have to smudge. I know some people are really against it. You know, especially people who have classical training. I have classical training and I still like doing this. I'm not smudging it completely as you can see, I'm just smudging it a little bit just to merge the colors together. Because I still want the direction of the fur to be visible. step would be to start working with the darker brown and to build up those shades. So this one, chocolate, <laughs> chocolate color. And you see now I'm already being much pickier about where I apply it. Adding shadows here and there. on the pores. Because it's such a blocked and shadow, I'm just going to go over in this sort of a more dense way.
Okay, so next I'm going to do a little bit more smudging. Now you can already see sort of a little bit of the cat coming through. So um, next I'm going to go in for some lighter shades and I'm actually going to use white. I'm going to use this white. Now this white is not very strong so it will not deposit too much too much color and then I've got another white which is much stronger which is like blinding white <laughs> which I will use at the end you know for the really strong highlights. So again I'm just color blocking. There are some shadows and some details and things but I'm just blocking it and I'm not going too strong just a little bit just to put that sort of a base foundation layer on. And I'm going to go in and soften a little bit more. I'm not blending white in with other colors, but I'm sort of softening it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go for the gray. Now with this color I'm going to really get into the, you know, the dark fur spots of the kitty. So in a way I'm also using this grey pastel to smudge the other colors as well together. Okay, now next I'm going to work on the eyes of the cat. hard to say exactly what they are on the picture but they kind of look like they're sort of a grayish green perhaps with a bit of rust in there so this is gray and let's put some green through black pupils and let's put a little bit of rust with this ochre and orange dark brown which is quite dark but not black. I will use black later but now I just wanted to strengthen the shadow and the fur around the eyes. And you see how here I'm just using little strokes. And I'm also going to bring a little bit of that shadow down as well and it always pays to spend a little bit extra time on the eyes because remember eyes are the window to our soul 
So now I'm gonna add some more orange to blend that out. And a little bit of that red. There it is. I thought I lost it for a moment. And just in some areas, I'm going to smudge. Okay, so now I'm going over the black again, and I'm also going to intensify the colors with the black. And now I'm also going to use black to intensify some of the fur patterns and create little strong accents. Now I also need to do a little bit of work on this cushion as well. I'm not going to do anything detailed. And I'm also going to use some red. And now I'm going to um, mark the shadows. It's quite interesting because looking at these shadows, they're almost, they're so dark, they're almost black. So now I am <clears throat> deepening some of the shadows. To create more contrast, I'm going to do some more shading. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some of the shadows even deeper on the ears and even though when you look at the picture you can see that there is white fur um, first of all we need to apply the shadow underneath and then the white fur is going to go over it because some areas are quite dark okay so now i need to deepen some of these first um, areas that i have applied because now that everything else is darker they seem to be too light that's why i always say you don't say that your work is finished or that parti particular spot is finished until the whole thing is finished because what happens is um you know things change colors next to it change and sometimes even while you're working you might be smudging things or you might be dragging some colors over you know that sort of stuff so Okay, and now I'm going to add just a little bit of the shadow. So now I'm going to look even more at the fur um, structure, fur direction, 
and things like that so that's why I'm already going in with larger strokes When, I, I don't know what this technique is called in um, pastels, but when you're painting with a paintbrush, this is called brushing. So it's like you're brushing the hair, the fur. I wonder if it's the same, probably. It's the same. I don't think I've seen cats with such a fluffy long extra fur bit up on the top. Brushing it and brushing it and making it furrier. Some gray. So now on those lines that I did with brown lightly, I'm putting in darker dots. And now I'm going for the strong white. Again, I'm brushing it through the fur in the areas where it is brushed through. And I really like when on any shade of paper you start to use white, it pretty much it just lifts the whole thing up. Such a cool effect. As soon as you put little highlights, eyes, you know, come to life straight away. Now I'm going to look at the little hairs, you know, inside the ears of the cats. Inside the cat's ears, that's what I was trying to say. It's extra fluffy, this cat. Now same on the other ear. I'm going to turn it around so that I'm not smudging everything with my hand. And I'm also going to introduce a little bit of this color and as well just a little bit more a brighter yellow. It's not a bright bright but it's definitely brighter than ochre. Oh look at that fluffy one. Now I'm going back to the white. Actually I forgot the nose. Oh no, no, no. Don't forget the nose. Okay, so I'm gonna go in for some brighter pink and introduce a little bit of that. And there, I'm also going to go with that pink and just here and there. Okay, and now I'm going to put a really soft little highlight on the nose.
and now I'm going to go in again with the white a little bit stronger to bring in the highlights just you know at that area above the lip and you see to achieve a really strong color I'm just going over and over the same area and I'm trying to cover everything with it not just in a sketchy way but in a very dense strong way and now I'm going to do a similar thing on this side going to put some more color because the light is sort of falling more from this direction so lighter things are going to be on that side I will get a little bit later more into it when I start to apply more shadows on the, on the other side of the kit just a little bit there And now I am going to again creating more of the fur effect and lots of really strong furry bits that are coming through. You know, and that is the thing that actually like tells you the kind of get it is, I guess. These are long and strong furry bits. Just to make that transition because it's still white there, it's just a bit of shadow. So what I want to do is just create a little bit of that transition. And now there's lots of fur. As I said, this cat seems to have really long fur, even on the paws here, it's quite long and you see now because I've got the background done, now I can go over it and create that fur, you know, that overlapping look of the fur longer fur between the toes I think or from the toes okay now let's work on the other on the other paw Let's add some more 
I don't really see this, but this is just from my memory. Oh my god. Okay, so now I'm going to go over with some more orange just to, you know, make it a little bit more brighter and then I can go into the shadow I see I'm not really doing much, I'm just really softly and gently going over and sort of adding a bit more I don't know how you'd call it, punch of color let's say that Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit more of the shadow and use my smudge stick to take care of it. Now these things still catch quite a bit of light, so... I won't bother with covering those up. But I need to go over some of these shadow areas, the ones that got a bit too light in the process. Something similar with grey going over it. And I'm even introducing a little bit of dark blue. Now I'm going to use my smudge stick but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it all in the direction of the fur growth so I'm not messing it up too much So now I'm just transferring the color through. Now, again, you know, like going back and forth with lights and the shadows and everything. So now I'm going to go over some areas again with white to really sort of pop them. here as well. It's really bright. All right and now I am going to go for the whiskers and for the eyebrow whiskers as well. On the other side too. Mm. 
my video has cut out for a little bit but i don't think um, we've missed much so um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just get a little bit more of the brightness stuff and just adding a little bit more texture with the color as well just a little bit more yellow more pink in the ears and refreshing some of the white in some areas as I'm going through I'm sort of defining the color a little bit you know like adding little highlights here and there You know things that you can't do when you're just starting up the drawing but now that we're getting quite close to finishing it so what you can do if you're going you know with your own um, artwork just have a look at little things you know like maybe a bit more texture that you can add somewhere that's sort of smudged a little bit or not very visible um, you know and things like that now I'm gonna go in with the blue again the dark blue because I've been using a lot of browns dark browns so when I use black black makes it look extra dark but if you want for things to stand out even more then you can go in a really dark shade but of the opposite color so for example if you've been using really dark brown now you can use a really dark blue and that would stand out even more sometimes than black just make sure it's quite a dark color With gray just add those little tiny final you know those real fluffy things that just make the sketch look so cute it's so interesting because there's even fur coming off these parts of the ears <laughs> so cute for here I'm going to use the black and have few more and more fluff gonna go for black deepen some of the lines sort of stripy but also patchy at the same time this cat kitten Okay, now I'm gonna go in with some more of this dark red.
I need a bit more highlights on the nose as well to define it a bit more. Kind of like merges in with the color of the fur. I think it's really almost done. I'm pretty much just getting the little tiny little things done. Do you guys have cats? Tell me what kind of cats you guys have. A little bit more white on these gray patches. Dark grayish sort of patches. And some more of those final little, I think it's a bit lighter here as well. And I think I'm going to get a little bit more red. well. I don't know if it's because this cat is quite young but the eyes are sort of a, a bit of everything really. Okay I think the kitty is pretty much done. So there isn't really a shadow, I'm not sure it's whatever that object is, but there is no shadow even though I wonder if I should put something in there. I'm also going to brighten up the whiskers as well. That needs a sharpening. There. Here is the pussy cat. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching it till the end. Now let's get to the important part. So that present. So what I did is I have filmed a video for my Patreon. It's half English and half Russian. It's full of useful tips and tricks and you know things as usual. It's also a very slow and relaxing tutorial. And what I'm doing is I'm actually making it available for everyone on YouTube to see it as well. So even if you're not paying any monthly fees or anything like this on Patreon, you're not a subscriber there, you can still go and you can still watch it. I'm leaving the link to uh, the Patreon account in the description box. So please make sure to go and check it out. I really hope you enjoy it, guys. And thank you so much for drawing with me.